All right, in this video, we're going to talk about section 1.6, dealing with logarithmic functions. This will be the last section in chapter one. And in this section, we're going to be changing between logarithmic and exponential forms, evaluate logarithms, simplify logarithmic expressions, solve logarithmic and exponential equations, and solve applications involving logarithmic, logarithmic functions. All right, so in the last section, we talked about exponential functions. So this time, we're going to be looking at the inverse of that would be logarithmic functions. And as you can see here, log logarithmic functions are closely related to exponential functions. And the exponential function and the corresponding logarithmic function are inverses of each other. So the inverse of the exponential function is the logarithmic function. And we begin this section by examining the concept of inverse functions. And then we then define a log logarithmic function as the inverse of the exponential function. And logarith logarithmic functions, I should say, logarithmic functions model and facilitate solving many types of problems, like the Richter scale, which measures the force of earthquakes, the decibel scale, that measures sound intensity and finding doubling time and half-life uh, for exponential change, okay? So that's how log logarithmic functions can be useful. All right, first of all, we talk about one-to-one -one functions. Let's consider the graphs of f of x is equal to x divided by two and g of x is equal to the absolute value of x divided by two, shown below. So on the left here, you'll see f of x is equal to x divided by two. And pretty much you can see what that graph looks like. And of course, you can see that each domain value corresponds to exactly one range value. Okay, you only got one x to only one y in this case. All right. And in f and g, each domain value corresponds to exactly one range value. The range value two corresponds to only the domain value of four in F. Now, if you look at this graph for G of X equaling to the absolute value of X divided by two, you're gonna see that the range value or the Y value of two corresponds to two different values negative four and positive four. So the function f you see here, you only got one domain to only one range. That means that this function is said to be one to one. So in this case here, the f of x equal to x divided by two is considered to be a one to one function because for, for every y, you're only gonna get one x. On the other hand, your g of x is not one to one because for the y value of two, you're gonna get two different x values, negative four and positive four. Okay. So this brings up the definition of the one-to-one -one function. A function is said to be one-to-one -one if each range value corresponds to exactly one domain value. So in this case here, the graph of f of x is increasing for all domain values here. That's f of x equals to x divided by two. So that graph there is one to one. Now for the g of x equaling to the absolute value of x divided by two, the graph there increases for some domain values and decreases for others. So that graph is not one to one. All right, now let's talk about what an inverse function is. An inverse function. F is, if F is a one-to-one -one function, then the inverse of F is the function formed by interchanging the independent and dependent variables for F. Thus, if the ordered pair A comma B is a point on the graph of F, then b comma a is a point on the graph of the inverse of f. Now, 
If your function is not considered to be one-to-one, -one, then that means that the function does not have an inverse. Okay? So if you don't have a one-to-one -one function, you cannot have an inverse for that function. All right. Let's look at logarithmic functions here. The exponential function f defined by y is equal to 2 raised to the x increases for all of its domain values and is 1 to 1. We talked about exponential functions back in the last uh, video for section 1.5. Uh, now, the inverse of f exists and is formed by interchanging the domain and range values to obtain x is equal to 2 raised to the y power. Now, we call this inverse the logarithm function with base 2. And we write that as y is equal to log to the base 2 of x, if and only if x is equal to 2 to the power of y. The graphs of y is equal to log to the base 2 of x and x is equal to 2 to the y are equivalent. Okay, and as we can see here on this next page, you can see here that the reflection of the graph of y is equal to 2 to the x, that's this graph here that you see in blue, in the line y is equal to x, that's this line here, this dotted line, gives the graph of the logarithmic function y is equal to log to the base 2 of x. That would be this graph that's in red because this graph is what we call the mirror image of this graph here. And here the line of symmetry is going to be the line y is equal to x. And the table right here shows coordinates for points on both the exponential function and the logarithmic function formed by interchanging the variables. So here's the table for the exponential function, and here's the table for the logarithmic function. For each ordered pair, they were interchanged. The graphs of both functions along with the graph of the line y equal x are shown, as you can see here. Now let's define what a logarithmic function is. Here's the definition. The inverse of the exponential function is called a logarithmic function. And for b is greater than 0 and b not equal to 1, meaning a positive constant other than 1 for the b, which is your base, y equal log to the base b of x, which is the logarithmic form, is going to be equivalent to x equal b to the power of y, which is your exponential form. Okay, so... Let's just say this, if I want to convert from log logarithmic form, which is y is equal to log to the base b of x, a simple trick that I can use here would be something like this. Your b is your base. This y would be your exponent. And it will be equal to whatever you're taking the log of. So it will convert to exponential form, b to the power of y equals to x. That's the same thing as saying x is equal to b to the power of y. Now, the log to the base b of x is the exponent to which b must be raised in order to get x. So that means b to what power y has to be equal to x. That's what that means. The domain of a logarithmic function is a set of all positive real numbers, which is also the range of the corresponding exponential function. So here the domain will be just those positive real numbers. That means it's only defined for positive numbers only, not zero and not negative numbers. The range of the logarithmic function is a set of all real numbers, which is also going to be the domain of the corresponding exponential function. So you can see that we've uh, interchanged the domain and the range. All right, now let's look at some examples of converting from logarithmic form to exponential form in this example right here. Let's say I want to rewrite 
log to the base 4, 256 equals 4 in an equivalent exponential form. Now I'm going to use that technique that I just showed you. Log to the base 4 of 256 equals to 4. Now, if I want to write that in its equivalent exponential form, this is what I would do. I would start with the subscript for your log. That's your base right there, which is this 4. What's after the equal sign is the exponent for the 4. So it'd be 4 to the 4th, equaling to what I'm taking the log of, in this case, 256. So that's how we convert from logarithmic form to its equivalent exponential form. Okay. All right, here's another example. We're going to write log to the base 128 of 2 is equal to 1 7th in its equivalent exponential form. So in this case here, we start with the base, which is your subscript for your log. That's the 128. This 1 7th will be the exponent for the 128. So we'll have 128 raised to the 1 7th, and that's equal to what we're taking the log of. In this case, it's going to be 2. So 128 raised to the 1 7th will be equal to 2. Now, example three is writing it in its equivalent logarithmic form. This is already an exponential form. Here we got 27 is equal to 3 to the third power. And I want to write that in its equivalent logarithmic form. Well, in this case here, if it's going to be in logarithmic form, we must have LOG in it. Now, let's look at this and find out what the base is. The base right here is your 3. So it be log to the base 3. And I know I have, a, have to have an equal sign in it because what's going after the equal sign will be your exponent for 3, which is, in this case, 3. And that's equal to the 27. So the 27 must go right after the LOG. So here we have log to the base 3 of 27 equals 3. Okay, here's another example. M is equal to B to the power of Z. And I want to write this equation in an equivalent logarithmic form. Because this exponential form, I want to convert it to its equivalent logarithmic form. So I know I need LOG. Let's say I identify the base here. Your base here is the B right here. So it'll be log to the base B. That Z is your exponent, so that Z has to go after the equal sign. So the M will have to go immediately after the logarithm. So M equaling to B to the power of X will be, I mean, to the power of Z is going to be equivalent to log to the base B of M equaling to Z. Okay. All right, in this example, in fact, the next three examples is where we're going to evaluate without using a calculator. That means we want to find the missing exponent here, the log to the base 10 of 100. And I'm going to let this be equal to y. That's, that's how I would start that problem off. Now, I'm going to convert that into its equivalent exponential form. Log to the base 100 log to the base 10 of 100 equaling to y means this. 10 to the power of y equals 100. Now, what I'm going to do here is write 100 as a expression with a base of 10. And I can do that by dividing 10 into 100. So 10 goes into 100 10 times. 10 goes into itself one time. So 10 is used as a factor twice, so that means 100 would be 10 to the second. So that means 10 to the power of y would be equal to 10 to the second. 
Now, notice when I apply that one-to-one -one property that I talked about in the video for section 1.5, if these bases are the same, I can set this exponent to be equal to that exponent. So I'm gonna set Y to be equal to two. And that is the missing exponent that I was trying to find for law to the base 10 of 100, which will be equal to two. And that's because two to the 10, I mean, 10 to the second power does give us 100. All right, next will be law to the base five of 25. I'm going to set that to be equal to y and convert that into its equivalent exponential form. So your base here is the 5. Your exponent is going to be the y because that's going to be the exponent we're trying to find. 5 to what power of y equals 25? All right, now, let's write 25 as a power of 5. 5 goes into 25 five times, and 5 goes into itself one time. So 25 is going to be 5 to the second. So here, 5 to the power of y is equal to 5 squared. Now here, these bases are the same, so I can set this exponent to be equal to that exponent. So be y is equal to 2. That's the missing exponent we're trying to find. So log to the base 5 of 25 equals two questions. Okay. So that's how we evaluate logarithms here. Okay, and on the next page, there is one more example of that. This time we got log to the base five of one over 25. And we want to evaluate that. So I'm gonna set this to be equal to y and convert it into its equivalent exponential form. So in this case here, this will be five raised to the power of y is equal to one over 25. Now, of course, uh, that 25, if I write it as a base of five, like I did in the last example, that would be five to the second. So I have five to the y is equal to one over five squared. But notice I got one over five to the second. And here I'm gonna use a property for exponents or for negative exponents, which says this, if I have one over a to the power of m, I can bring the base out of the denominator and change the sign of my exponent from positive to negative. So one over a to the power of m would be a to the negative m power. So one over five squared would be this, I bring the five, y, 5 to the power of y down, but 1 over 5 squared would be 5 to the negative 2. Now, as you can see, the bases are the same, so I can set the exponents equal to each other. So I'll have y equaling to negative 2. And that will be the uh, missing exponent here. So log to the base 5 of 1 over 25 equals negative two. Okay. All right, so that's how we evaluate logarithms here, by finding the missing exponent. All right, next we'll look at theorem one dealing with properties of logarithmic functions here. And that's this box right here that you see. Now, if B, M, and N are positive real numbers where B is not equal to one and P and X are real numbers, then we have these eight properties here. Log to any base B of one will automatically be zero because if you think about it, B to the zero power, as long as B is not equal to one, it can be any real number, it's going to be equal to one. The second one, log to the base b of itself, would be equal to one because b to the first power is b. Number three, if I have log to the base b of b to the power of x 
that's going to be equal to x because log to the base b and b to the x are inverses of each other. And then number four, b raised to the log to the base b of x will be equal to x because again, b and log to the base b are inverses of each other. And that's provided that x is a positive number. Now, five, six, and seven are properties of logarithms as well. In number five, you're dealing with a product rule. Number five, you're dealing with a product rule. Log to the base B of M times N. We always write that as the sum of the individual logarithms. Have the log of the product. That's going to be equivalent to the sum of the individual logarithms. Log to the base B of M plus log to the base B of N. And in number seven, number six deals with the quotient rule. Log to the base B of M divided by N. If you have a log of the quotient, we can expand that as the difference of the individual logarithms. So it'd be log to the base B of M minus log to the base B of N. Now number seven deals with the power rule. Log to the base B of M raised to the power of P means this, we bring this exponent of p in front and it'll be multiplied by log to the base b of m, okay? So number five is the product rule. Number six is the quotient rule. And number seven is the power rule. And you've probably seen these in college algebra, where we did talk about properties of uh, logarithms, those three, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. Now, number eight is the one-to-one -one property for logarithms. If we have log to the base B of M equaling to log to the base B of N, that's, if, that's true if and only if M is equal to N. And that means you have the log of the base B being the same on both sides, I can set the M to be equal to N. Okay. All right, next we'll look at some examples of just that. And in this case, in example A, you want to write in terms of simpler terms, like log to the base D of M to the fifth. All right, notice we got an exponent here of five. So we need to apply the power rule. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we need to apply the power rule. And we're going to do that by bringing this 5 in front. So it'll be 5 times log to the, to the base D of M. And that's all we have to do to that problem right there. So log to the base D of M to the fifth using the power rule would be 5 times log to the base D of M. All right, number nine, example nine, we got five raised to the K times log to the base five of T. Now these rules work if you were going in the other direction. Notice that the K is in front of log to the base five of T. Here we can apply the power rule because P times log to the base B of M is equivalent to this. We bring the uh, coefficient out and bring, make that the exponent for what we're taking the log of. So that means this K will be the exponent for the T. So it'd be five log to the base five of T raised to the fifth. All right, and then we can use another property where we have this property right here. B raised to the log to the base B of X equaling to X. So that means five raised to the log to the base five of T to the fifth. Five and log to the base five of inverses would be left with just T to the fifth as our answer. I'm sorry, this should be T to the K. I don't know where I got that from. That K is going to be the exponent for T. I 
And again, log to the base log five times log to the base five are inverses. So you'll be left with just T raised to the K power. Okay. Again, I apologize for that. Okay, let's look at how to solve a logarithmic equation. Like log to the base five of X is equal to three. Log to the base five of X is equal to three. Now in this case here, the way we're gonna solve this logarithmic equation, we need to convert this into its equivalent exponential form and then solve for x, okay? So the subscript here for, for the log is five, that's your base. This three will be the exponent for the five. So it'd be five to the third, and then that's gonna be equal to what you're taking the log of, x. So five cubed is equal to x. If we cube the five, five times five times five, that's 125. So x equals 125 is the solution to that logarithmic equation. And normally you would check to see if uh, this will satisfy that original uh, logarithmic uh, function or equation. Here's one check to see if uh, you're gonna get a log of a negative number or log of zero. In this case, you're not, that's not gonna happen. So x equals 125 is the solution to that logarithmic logarithmic equation. Okay. Let's say we have this equation, log to the base b of x is equal to log, I mean, log to the base b of x plus log to the base b of the quantity x minus three is equal to log to the base b of 40. Okay, that's what I was trying to say. Now to solve an equation like this one, you wanna make sure that each side is a single logarithm. Each side of the equation is a single logarithm. If you look at the left side, you got a plus sign between the two logarithms. That means I have a sum of the individual logarithms. That means I can apply the product rule here. The sum of the individual logarithms will condense to the log of the product log to the base b of m times n. So in this case, log to the base b of x plus log to the base b of x minus three will condense as log to the base b of x times x minus three. That's equal to log to the base b of 40. And since we have the log logarithm on both sides of the equations, we have a single logarithm on both sides, we can apply that one-to-one -one property by setting this x times x minus three to be equal to 40. And then I will simplify the left side. x times x will be x squared minus x times three will be three x equals 40. So now I have a quadratic equation. And I'm gonna move the 40 over to the other side by subtracting 40. So that means I have x squared minus three x minus 40 equal to zero. And I'm subtracting 40 on both sides. Now I can factor this quadratic equation into two binomials here. X squared breaks up as x and x. Middle term is a minus, the last term is a minus, so one has to be minus, the other one has to be plus. Factors of 40 that give me negative three X will have to be minus eight and a plus five. So here factor completely, I have X plus X minus eight times X plus five equal to zero. And then we set each binomial factor equal to zero. So I have X minus eight equals zero or X, plus five equals zero. And each equation will solve for x. So for the x minus eight is equal to zero, that has to be x equals eight 
or for x plus 5 equals 0, that means x equals negative 5. Now we have to pick, eliminate the one that would give us a log of a negative number. And in this case, if you try to replace the x with negative 5, you're going to have log of a negative number. That's undefined. So let's cross that out. That would have to mean that x is equal to 8 is the solution to that logarithmic equation. Okay. All right, another example. Let's say we had log to the base 10 of x plus 3 minus log to the base 10 of the quantity x minus 3 is equal to 1. Again, we have a difference of the individual logarithms. That means we need to condense that as the log of the quotient. So we have to apply the quotient rule here. We got the difference of the individual logarithms. It will condense to this, the log of the quotient. So that means the left side, I have log to the base 10 of the x plus 3 will be the num in the numerator divided by x minus 1, I mean x minus Three, which will be in your denominator. X minus three. And that's equal to one. Now notice we have a logarithm on one side of the equation. So we need to convert this into its equivalent exponential form. So that means the 10 would be your base. This one would be the exponent for the 10. So it'd be 10 to the first power equals this expression right here, x minus x plus 3 times x minus 3. And let's do this. Let's do some cross uh, multiplication here if we can. That 10 to the first power is like 10, 10 to the first power over 1. But 10 to the first power is 10. So when I cross multiply, I'm going to have 10 times the quantity x minus 3, equaling to 1 times the quantity x plus 3. Use the distributive property on each side. 10 times x will be 10x. Minus 10 times 3 will be 30. Not on the right side. 1 times x plus 3 will just simply be x plus 3. And now we're going to move some terms over to the opposite side. Let's move the x over to where the 10x is by subtracting 10x on both sides. So that means 10x minus the 1x will be 9x. Minus 30 is equal to 3. And if I add 30 to both sides to get that 9x by itself, I'll have 9x is equal to 33. I'm going to need to continue this over to this side since I'm running out of space. Divide both sides by 9. That means x is equal to 33 over 9. And if we reduce this by multiple, I mean, dividing the numerator and the denominator by 3, this will be... 11 thirds. Now, in this case, it'll, uh, 11 thirds would be like 3 and 2 thirds. And if I do the check, I won't get a 0 here. And this one will not be a 0 here for 3 and 2 thirds. So x is equal to 11 thirds is the solution to that logarithmic equation. Okay. All right. Now let's look at calculated evaluation of logarithms. I'm going to talk mostly on common logarithms and natural logarithms. All right. Of all possible logarithmic bases, E and 10 are used almost exclusively. Okay. 
So here, when we're dealing with common logarithms, those are going to be logarithms that have a base of 10. And in mathematics notation, log of x is the same as saying log to the base 10 of x. Log of x is the same as log to the base 10 of x. Now for the natural logarithms, those are the ones that have the base e. Logarithms with base e will be natural logarithms. And in math notation, we use ln of x, which actually means log to the base e of x. And most calculators do include keys labeled log and ln for common and natural logarithms, respectively. So if you look at this calculator here, you'll see the ln button. And there's also the e to the x button up there as well. So to get e to the x, if you recall, it would be second and ln. All right. As previously noted, most cal current calculators have dedicated keys for common logarithms, which is your LOG button, and natural logarithms, which is the LN button, as I first showed you. Finding values for common and natural logarithms is easy. So on most calculators, you just press either the log key or the LN key and enter the number from the domain. But you have to use positive values here and then press the enter key. Some calculators require entering the domain value first and then press the log key or LN key. So, you know, check your calculators, check what type of calculator you're using and uh, follow the procedure. Because sometimes you might have to just press the LN key or the log key first and then type in your domain, or you may have to type in the domain first and press either the log key or the LN key. So here's some examples of that. Here we're going to evaluate using a calculator. So in part A, we got log of 3,100.4. A log of 3,100.4. So here, on the calculator, I'm going to clear this out. We're going to press the log key on the left-hand side. There's a log key. And then 3,100.4, close parentheses, and then press Enter. And let's say we want to round this off to five decimal places. So in this case, we would get 3.4914. Two, because the fifth number after the decimal point is a one to the right of that is seven. The seven will make the one a two when we round. So the log of 3100.4 will be 3.49142. All right, part B, the log of 0 0.0247801. And we're going to round that answer to five decimal places as well. So we press the log key, 0 0.0247801, press enter. And notice you're going to get a negative number. So the five decimal places, this will be negative 1.605. Let's see, 89, the next number is a six. So 89 goes up to 90. So it'd be negative 1.60590 for the log of 0 0.0247801. Now, C and D deals with the natural logarithm. So here we have LN of 575.99. And again, we're going to round this off to five decimal places. So this time we're going to be pressing the LN key, which is the button right below the log key. So LN and then type in 575.99 and then press enter. So in this case, it would get 
nine, rounded to five decimal places. Okay. And finally, part D, LN of 0 0.037580. So here we press the LN key, and then 0 0.037580, close parentheses, to five decimal places, that would be a negative 3.28128. Okay. So that's how we use a graphing cal uh, our calculator to evaluate natural logarithms and common logarithms as well. Okay. All right, example 14. Let's say I want to find the value of x here. Like log, to, log of x is equal to 2.4098. I'll do this over here. Log of x is equal to 2.4098. All right, now let's think about this for a moment. There is no subscript for the logarithm, which is understood to be a base 10. So we're going to say log to the base 10 of x is equal to 2.4098. And then we're going to convert that equation, that logarithmic equation, into its equivalent exponential form. So that means I'm going to have 10 to the 2.4098 power equaling to x. So this will be 10 to the 2.4098 power, and that's equal to x. So in the calculator, we got 10, and then press the hat key for your exponent. 2.4098, and then press enter. And let's say I want to round that final answer to four decimal places. So in this case, this would be 256.9212. So this is 256.9212, and that's what X is equal to. And that's our answer for part A. All right, part B. The log of X is equal to negative 1.6153. Well, just like part A, log of X is just going to be log to the base 10 of x is equal to negative 1.6153. And then we're going to convert that into its equivalent exponential form. So this means 10 to the power of negative 1. negative 1.6153 will be equal to x. So 10 to the negative 1.6153 is equal to x, so that means x is equal to, and here we use our calculator, type in 10, press the hat key for your exponent, and then the negative key, 1.6153, then that's equal to, to four decimal places, that would be 0 0.0242. So x then will be equal to 0 0.0242. Okay, now part C. This time we got ln of x is equal to 3.4946. Now, if you recall, and I'm going to bring this paper back up, you're going to see that ln of x means log to the base e of x. So I'm going to rewrite ln of x as log to the base e of x. 
is equal to 3.4946. And now I'm going to convert that into its equivalent exponential form. So it'll be e to the 3.4946, that would be equal to x. So e to the 3.4946 equals x. So that means x will have to be equal to, using our calculator, to get the e, you have to press second and ln for the e. Second ln, and then 3.4946. Press enter. And to four decimal places, that would be 32.9371. Okay. And then finally, part D, we have ln of x is equal to negative 1.7537. And again, ln of x means net log to the base e of x. That's equal to negative 1.7537. Now we can convert that into its equivalent exponential form, which means that e to the power of negative 1.57, negative 1.7537 equals x. So this would be e to the negative 1.7537. That's equal to x. So that means x is equal to, now for the e, we do second ln for the e. Press the negative key, 1.7537. And to four decimal places, that would be approximately 0 0.1731. So here, x in this case will be 0 0.1731. Okay. So that's what example 14 looks like. All right, example 15. Here we're going to solve this equation to four decimal places. e to the x is equal to 2.098. Now I'm going to show you how to solve this equation in case you've uh, forgotten how to do this in college algebra. If you remember that e and ln are inverses of each other. e and ln are inverses of each other. So that means I'm going to take the natural log on both sides of this equation. And there's a property for natural logarithm says, that says this, ln of e to whatever your exponent is, is going to be that exponent. ln of e to whatever your exponent is, is that exponent. So here, ln of e to the x is just going to be x. And that's equal to ln of 2.098. And how did I know that I had to take the natural log on both sides? Because I know that ln and e are inverses of each other. And that's from college algebra. So here, we press the ln key. And then 2.098, close parentheses, hit enter. Let's see, two, four decimal places. This will be 0.74, that 8 will make that 0, 9, 1, 0. So it'll be 0. 0.7410. So x is equal to 0. 0.7410. Okay, and the next example, example 16, is this. 2.169 raised to the 9t is equal to 4. OK, to solve this equation, probably the best way I would do this is just take the natural log on both sides of this equation. And apply the power rule on the left-hand side by pulling the 9t in front, so it'd be 9t times ln of 2.169 
equals ln of 4. And now we can solve this equation for t. So I need to divide both sides by 9 and also ln of 2.169. So I have 9 ln of 2.169 being divided on both sides of this equation. That way t will be by itself. Now in this case here to get get my final answer on the calculator, I have to do this. LN four close parentheses. That's going to be divided by, and I'm going to put the nine LN of two point one six nine in parentheses. So it'll be divided by nine, then press the LN key, two point one six nine. Close the parentheses around for the LN, and then close it again for that first set of uh, parentheses, and then hit enter. So four decimal places, this will be 0 0.1989. So T will be 0 0.1989, okay? Now, if you're not sure about solving equations, go to section 4.4 uh, under the uh, College Algebra Playlist for 2020, the most latest one, okay? And uh, check that playlist out under section 4.4. And I do talk about how to solve equations like this. All right, finally, we'll look at ap an application of logarithms. Different investments can be compared by using their doubling times. The doubling time for an exponential growth model is the length of time it takes a given value to double. Note that exponential growth models are characterized by having a fixed doubling time. An investment with a shorter doubling time has a higher rate of return, and logarithms provide a convenient tool for solving doubling time problems. Now take a look at this example that I have here. In the first 10 years, a mutual fund produced an average annual return of 20.28%. Assume that money invested in this fund continues to earn 20.28% compounding annually. How long will it take them invest the money invested in this fund to double. Okay. Now, we need to know something right here, compounded annually. We need to know that we have to use this formula. If you recall, back in the last section when we were dealing with uh, exponential uh, functions, and we were dealing with compound interest, we had this formula, A is equal to P times 1 plus R divided by M raised to the M times T. Now let's identify some things here. The annual rate of return, that R, is going to be 20.28%. But as a decimal, it's going to be 0. 2028. T is what we're trying to find. Okay. We don't have to know what P is, but we know the P is going to be the original amount. For the amount to double, it has to be two times that original amount, 2P. Now, if you recall, M is the number of compoundings in a year. So in this case, if it's compounded annually, that means M must be equal to one. Now, let's see, we can do some substitution here. The A is gonna be two times P. That's equal to P times one plus the R, which is 0 0.2028, divided by M, which is one, is equal to m, which is going to be 1 times t, because t is what we're trying to find. How long will it take? So we're looking for the time that it needs to take for it to happen. Now let's simplify this a bit. 
2p is equal to p times 1 plus 0 0.2028 will be 1.2028. 1, 1 times t will be t. Now let's get this exponential part by itself. We're multiplying it by p, so we need to divide both sides by p. So here, the p's divide out, you'll be left with the 2. And that's equal to 1.2028 raised to the power of t. So what we need to do here is uh, take the natural logarithm on both sides of this equation. So I'm going to have ln of 2 equaling to ln of 1.2028 raised to the power of t. And then on the right side, this I can apply that power rule by bringing the t in front of the natural log. So let me bring down ln of 2 and pull the t in front of the natural log of 1.2028. Now we need to solve for t by dividing both sides by ln of 1.2028. So t will be equal to, and we bring in our calculator. The numerator will be ln of 2, close parentheses, divided by the denominator ln of 1.2028, close parentheses, and hit enter. Now, I think in that problem, they want us to round the final answer to the nearest whole number. Yeah, to the nearest year or to the nearest whole number. So 3.7 to the nearest whole number would just simply be four. So it would take approximately four years, since the time is going to be in years, for the money invested in that fund to double. Okay. So that's how we solve this type of exponential equation using logarithms. All right, and finally, example 18 is this. How many years will it take $7,000 to grow to $10,800 if, if it is invested at 5.75% compounded continuously? Now, for continuous compounding, this is the formula we use here. A is equal to P times E to the RT. Again, refer to the video for section 1.5 uh, when we were talking about exponential functions. And one of the topics was uh, compound interest. Let's identify what we have here. We're taking a $7,000 investment, so P is 7,000. We want it to hit $10,800. That's what A is going to be, $10,800. R is your interest rate of 5.75%. But if you convert that to a decimal, take 5.75, divide that by 100, you would get 0 0.0575. Now let's do some substitution. Your A is 10,800, equaling to P, which is 7,000, times E to the R. That's going to be 0 0.0575. T is what we're trying to find. So just bring over the T. So this is your exponential equation that we're going to solve for T. Well, let's get the exponential part by itself. We're multiplying it by 7,000, so we need to divide both sides by 7,000. So now you're going to have E to the 0 0.0575T, and then that's equal to 10,800 divided by 7. This will be approximately 1.5. Tell you what, instead of putting this as a decimal, let's leave it as 10,800 divided by 700. That way we'll get an accurate value for T. And since T, I mean, since E and LN are inverses of each other, what we're going to do here is take the natural log on both sides. Then LN of this. 
Now on the right side, ln of e to whatever that exponent is, is that exponent. So ln of e to the 0 0.0575t will be 0 0.0575t. And that's equal to ln of the 10,800 divided by 7,000. And then the, to solve for t, we'll divide both sides of this equation by 0 0.0575. So that means T is equal to, all right, and I'm gonna bring in my calculator for this one. So in this case here, this will be LN of 10,800 divided by 7,000, close parentheses. And whatever that is, is gonna be divided by 0 0.0575, then hit enter. And we're going to round the final answer to two decimal places. So this will be approximately 7.54. So it will take approximately 7.54 years for a investment of $7,000 to grow to $10,800 if it is invested at 5.75% compounded continuously. Okay. All right, so that does conclude this video on section 1.6, dealing with uh, logarithmic functions. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about any of the uh, homework problems in my math lab or any of the problems that I've covered in this video.